Россия! Россия! Тольятти! Лада! Да, дорогой, но очень классный. Россия, вперед!
Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Yeah. That's good. Where is it? Yeah, what? <laughs> and excited to be here, might I add. How are you, Benny? Thank I you. can't hear you, Benny. Referees are Olivier Goan from Canada and Miko Kakakori from Finland. It's the bronze medal game of the 2019 World Hockey Championship, not where Ilya Vorobiev and the Russians expected to be after they reeled off eight straight wins to start the tournament. Milos Riyad, his first year as the head coach of the Czech national team, will try to get them a medal for the first time since 2012. And we will have three new medalists this year at the World Championship no matter what because the three teams that won medals last year are all out of contention. We'll see in a hurry which team has the ability to dig down a little deeper. We talk about it every year in every tournament. This is a difficult game to get started in, to invest yourself emotionally. It was a kick in the pants to get so close to the gold medal game, and you're not there. Somebody will have more energy than the other. We'll find out here if someone can take control of this game early. Andre Vasilevsky leads the tournament in save percentage allowed. Just one goal to the Finns, but was all the Finland needed to advance to the gold medal game. Simon Rubets gets the start for the Czechs. Played one game in the tournament so far, allowed two goals on 24 shots and a 7-2 win over Norway. He was the Czech League MVP in the playoffs this year. Always interesting at times in the tournament where as you see, they do a little repair on the ice. Very warm day here today in Bratislava. But they have three goalies. Rubic wasn't dressed yesterday. He wasn't even a backup. That was Pavel Francouz of the Colorado Avalanche who came into the game. Yet they go to their third goaltender today with a chance for a medal. Sergei Plotnikov draws into the Russian lineup. It was a healthy scratch yesterday. Ivan Telegin. He's out today. Russia was sixth last year, lost to Canada in overtime in the quarterfinals. They had won medals at the previous four World Championships. But this lineup, so deep, so full of NHL stars, will not win a gold medal. Oh, they're moving around, patching places here. This is a couple of them before we can get going. Davis Konishka draws in for the Czechs. He too was a healthy scratch yesterday. So the Russians of the home team have the last change. Czechs beaten by Canada 5 to 1 in their semifinal game as Orlov moves out ahead to Ilya Kovalchuk, the Russian captain. That pass missed him. That's icing called against the Russians. A huge contingent once again of Czech fans here. In Bratislava, the Czech border is less than an hour away from Bratislava. Every period, the Russians start this fourth line, which does include Kovalchuk and Sergei Plotnikov, who's in today instead of Taligan and, and, and Dronov. But they start every period for Coach Vorobiev. And then hardly play as the puck goes into the Russian bench. Well, they get a 20-second start. Here comes Kucherov's line. There's the Czech's leader, Jakub Voracek, who's had a terrific tournament. Everything seems to go through his hands on the power play. One of the best passers you'll see on the wing in the National Hockey League, and he's done the same thing here with 12 assists. The only player on this Czech team who has won a World Championship gold medal did that back in 2010. Sergeyev got bumped there, plays it down to Gusev. 
Getting Gusev around for Kucherov. Back goes Jan Kolash. And Rubens knocks that away. Great pass knocked down by Kolash. Here's Sergachev with it. Pants that back down to the check zone and drawn up. Leaves it there for Gusev. Gusev sends it down to Kucherov. And now Gusev back with it. Gusev loose behind the check goal. Feeds that down to Kucherov. Nikita Kucherov drops it off for Gusev. The return pass was blocked by Kolaj. And Anisimov has that taken away by Radko Gudis. Last time I was, I saw Radko Gudis was when we were walking in. He was in the middle of a pool that doesn't have any water because he booted the soccer ball in the warm-up game about 30 yards off target. He said, not, not a good shot. He says, that's why I don't play soccer. In comes Ovechkin dashing in. Ovechkin couldn't get a backhand shot away. Alexander Ovechkin. To the side of the goal, Kuznetsov feeds that in front. Ovechkin poking at it. And Dominic Simone couldn't clear that out. Happy Zulin throws it back in. Here is David Musil. His father, Fredesek, is here to watch him play in this bronze medal game. The lead pass goes to Simone. Oh. And the kid Zadorov erased him in a hurry. As soon as he started to cut in, the road was closed. Zadorov was standing right there waiting for him. Might as well have run into a concrete block. Dmitry Yashkin steps up, shoots from a sharp angle. Vasilevsky knocks that away. Yashkin. Had that knocked down by Kaprizov. And now Happy Zulik. Up for Evgeny Malkin. Malkin winds in. Rolls off his stick. Jan Ruta plays out ahead for Yashkin. Knocked away by Orlov. Cross he goes for Nikita Zaitsev. And Dmitry Orlov of the Washington Capitals works in. Orlov steps around Yaskin. In, shoots. Saved me by Rudetz. And rebound loose in front. Knocked down and knocked away by Yaskin. Zaitsev goes back. To, this will be a nice call against the Jacks. First tough stop. Simone Rubich makes the stop. As Orlov dusts Yaskin out by the blue line, beats him clean, and that shot hits the flat part of the catching glove. It's like he's got two blockers on as he makes the stop. Ovechkin nearly breaks all the way through. He came off his customary wing to dodge through the middle and not able to get a shot away. Out the face off. Controlled by David Spanichka, who draws into the check lineup. Ruta. Up ahead for Yaskin. And drawn off for Zaitsev, around for Plotnikov. Sergei Plotnikov, lead pass for Ilya Kovalchuk. That sharp angle shot goes away wide. Now Orlov back with it. His shot was blocked. And Yaskin has it knocked away by his Washington teammate, Orlov. Jack's finally going to change in after the icing call. And Plotnikov. Drops it off for Vladislav Gavrikov. Rubets leaves that there for Zamorski. And Peter Zamorski's pass is picked off at center ice by Gusev. In for Nikita Kucherov. Kucherov shoots off the outside of the goal. Kucherov back with it. Spins on Zamorski. Kucherov's pass blocked by Zamorski. And now brought ahead by Jakub Verana. Drops it back for Repic. And a penalty coming here. 4 3 in the opening period. A high sticking call will go against Yashkin, who's performing Zahorna. Thomas Zahorna goes off. He's trying to skate away, but they've got him anyway. Zahorna, who had the goal in the third period against Canada to break Matt Murray's shutout, is going to get clipped right there as the high stick comes up and catches Gusev on the cheek. Will be the second whack at it. Oh, geez. He acted that one up pretty good. Russia gets their first power play. 0 for 1 yesterday, eight goals on the tournament. On 25 attempts led by Dadnov. Ovechkin pounds that on goal, and Rubets made the save. Dadnov's got four power play goals. In comes Kuznetsov. That deflects up and out of play. Kuznetsov came that close 
They're giving Russia the lead. The Russians have all kinds of talent on their power plays. This power play didn't get on the ice until about 30 seconds left in their only power play yesterday against the Finns. Oh, good play by Radek Fox as he gets his stick into the area where Kuznetsov's trying to loft it up into the top of the net. Kuznetsov, back for Hafezulin. Dinar Hafezulin plays that back. And Ovechkin around for Kaprizov. Kuznetsov steps up. And Hafezulin can't hold the line for the Russians. And here's Ilya Kovalchuk with it. Ilya Kovalchuk. Bob sat back for Ovechkin. Fed down to Kaprizov. He leaves it there, but knocked to the line. Not up by Kolaj. Ovechkin. Rink wide pass for Kuznetsov. Kaprizov. Back for Hafezulin. Back for Kaprizov. Minutes ago on the power play. Here's Kuznetsov with it. Down to Kaprizov. Ovechkin trying to get loose. Kaprizov slides it across. The pass picked up and sent down the ice by Repik, who saw that coming. Too slow. The puck's not moving quick enough. You've got both Kovalchuk and Ovechkin standing there with their sticks in the air, waiting for the one-time pass. And slowly developing play picked off rather easily by the Czechs. Rink wide pass to Malkin. Drop sat back for Gusev at the line. Sergachev can't hold it, and the play is called offside. There are times you get too many of the same player trying to do the same thing, and I think that hampers the Russian power play. It's certainly not a lack of skill or finishing ability, but a, maybe too many similar parts. Nikita Kucherov had an unbelievable season and has had a terrific tournament on the power play. His ability to spread the game from his improvement in the shot, the one-timer, and then, of course, feeding Steven Stamkos across the seam for the one-timers made Tampa's power play as good as anybody in the NHL. Gusev to Malkin, a centering pass. Kucherov shoots, and the save is made by Rubens. Good read, Rubens, to get across Malkin to Kucherov. And Malkin had a tough day yesterday. Not much going on. He turned the puck over a few times. But here, he's only got his head up a second or so, and he knows where Kucherov's going to be right to the dot. The pass is perfect and right literally on the dot. His one-timer is turned aside. Fifteen seconds to go on the Russian power play. The face-off won by Faxa and sent down the ice. Malkin trying to work around Gudis. Out of the box comes the Horna. And Sergachev back to pick it up. Three shots on goal for the Russians on that power play. Main scoreless here in the first period. As the game went along against Finland, the longer it went scoreless, you could sense the Russians getting more and more frustrated. Barabanov picks off that pass. Swings that down to the goal. Now Plotnikov a backhand shot. That's turned away. And now Barabanov back with it. Dance around Kolash. And Kolash gets the stick on him. Kolash ahead for Voracek. He became a new father during this tournament. Back, back to Prague. His wife had a baby. It was true of Patrick Bartoshak, the goaltender. Both became new dads in the last couple of weeks. And Dronov on it. Plays it down to Ruta. He's felled by Barabanov. Back at the point is Orlov, Dmitry Orlov. Swings that down, Barabanov waiting for it. Andre Palata, the Tampa Bay Lightning gets there first. And Palata lead pass, bounced away from Frolik. And Orlov knocks it back down to the check zone. Shots are five to one in favor of Russia. Czechs won the last meeting last year in overtime. David Kostrenak scored the winner for the Czechs in that one. Kubalik tries to center it. Gulash knocks it back down to Kubalik. Led the Swiss National League in goal scoring this year. 
Ovechkin swings out rink one. It's picked off by David Musil. Lead pass for Gulash. Shoots and Vasilevsky got just a piece of that. Gulash throws it back in front. Knocked down by Kubali. Gulash back with it. And a hard shot by Kovash. Knocked wide but a hand pass called against the Czech Republic. No score here in the bronze medal game. Back here in Bratislava, mentioned that the Czechs won in overtime last year against the Russians. This year in the round robin, Russia won a 3 0 round robin game against the Czech Republic. There's Vasilevsky, who faced just 23 shots in that game. Russia had four shutouts in the preliminary round two for Alexander Georgiev from the New York Rangers, two from Vasilevsky. Phoenix Zahorna. Played in Lati in the Finnish league this year. He'll join his brother Thomas in Khabarovsk in the KHL next year at the very eastern end of Russia. As Repic shot goes off a stick up and out of play. Michael Repic's had a good tournament, had three goals and had a couple of good chances yesterday. Really shoots the puck well. A former second round pick by Florida back in 2007 had a couple of years stint in North America. So the Russian blueprint in this tournament is to hop on people early. They've outscored the opposition 11 to 2 in the first period and they don't give up much. It's 11 goals against in nine games. But against the Finns the goal scoring dried up completely. Dadnov drops it back to Zaitsev. Nikita Zaitsev spins around Ruta, centering pass missed, and Orlov stepped into that. Vrana got a stick on it, and that puck goes away up and out of play. A couple of Washington Capital teammates here as Orlov gets to walk right into this, and there's Verano off the shaft of his stick, goes up into the netting. Might want to check that stick to see if it's any good. He got benched in the quarterfinals. Played just 11 minutes yesterday, didn't have a shot in the semifinal loss to Canada. When they fell behind, they threw him back in the lineup. Hadn't played in nearly an hour. There was no coming back yesterday. As good as the Finns were, Canada was pretty much the same in their semifinal win over the Czechs. Those are the two teams that won yesterday deserve to win. They're, that was terrific hockey by them both yesterday. Vladislav Gavrikov moves out ahead. Here's Kovalchuk with it. Philip Ronick stepped back on him. Bouncing puck for Plotnikov. Knocked out by Yaskin. And moved out by Palat. He got crunched there by Zadorov. Gavrikov, the captain of the 2015 Russian junior team, moved that to the blue line and back out. Faxa works in, tied up by Zadorov. Feeds it down to Yaskin. Yaskin centering pass is blocked there by Andronov. And Ovechkin moves it back to center ice. Brad Kogut is being shadowed there by Ovechkin. Feeds it back across for Kolash. Kogutas up for Gulash. Drops it back, and that shot by Kolash is knocked away by Vasilevsky. Afizulin 
Long lead pass at center ice. Ovechkin whips that across for Kaprizov. Kirill Kaprizov moves in. Poke check from behind by Goulash. Ron Goulash led the Czech League in goals and points this year. Playing for Pilsen. At the age of 33, making his national team debut for the Czechs. Phoenix Sahorna. Tying up there, looks down for Kovash. Now Kovash digs that free. Sahorna back for Rupik. He pounded that high and wide. Gudas holds the line now for the Czechs. Shots are 6 to 2 Russia. No score here in the first period. Rupik pulls that free. Now a loose puck. And that shot by Zahorna goes just wide. And now Thomas Zahorna, his brother, steps in. Throws it back in deep for Hinek. That pass misfired, and Ruta has to go back and pick it up. Long pass for Repic missed, and the Czechs are called for icing. Some good work in the offensive zone for the Czechs. They won a couple of pucks. Harder on it on the 50-50 pucks than the Russians, and you start cycling the puck around. Not only do you have a chance to score, of course, but you just kill their offensive game. They're spending all their energy chasing you around in their own defensive zone. So one thing the Finns did very well yesterday, Ray, was keep the Russian top players defending. Okay. Gusev swings that rink wide. In with a shot is Zaitsev from the point. That's stopped by Rubets. 8-17 to go in a scoreless first period. Back here in Bratislava at what has really been a festival of hockey for the last two and a half weeks here in Kosice. Oh, the tournaments are outstanding. Again, a really well attended tournament. People having all kinds of fun, some more than others, <laughs> some later than others. It's, a, it's been an enjoyable tournament again. David Musil plays that around for Voracek. Thanks that back for Philip Ronick, who is. Terrific year in the National Hockey League. Five goals in 46 games with Detroit, and then spent half the year with Grand Rapids in the American League as well. But spent a lot of time in the top four for the Red Wings when he was up. He's become their big minute guy here, 22 and a half minutes or so in the last few games. Frolik to Voracek, a centering pass, knocked down by Michael Frolik. This is where I think the Czechs can do some damage here. Cycle the puck, hold it in the offensive zone, Make the Russians defend. It's never been a strength of theirs. They defend by having the puck and moving it up the other way. Brought the lead pass. That missed Verana. And icing waved off as Verana got there first. Orlov slides out ahead for Dadanov. Getting Dadanov. Works in from his knees. Dropped that back. And Malkin couldn't get a shot away. Now Yaskin back with it. Sergachev knocks it down, shoots, that's deflected, scored! Sergachev's point shot tipped in front. Looks like Dadnov got a stick on it. And the Russians take a 1 0 lead. 13 minutes in. Russia gets the lead, and I believe it is Dadnov, Gord, right in front of the net. As the Russians take a turn over here. Yaskin doesn't get the puck out. Well, that might be Gregorenko yeah. just out on top of Dadanov. 
Zergachev is just going to fling this towards the net. Yeah, there's the tip. It's Gregorenko, and then it goes through the screen of Dadanoff, and Rubic can't catch up to it. It's straight through him. I don't think that touches Dadanoff in front. The traffic creates the screen, the tip creates the misdirection, and the Russians are on the board. Gregorenko. He spent some time in the NHL with Buffalo and Colorado, but couldn't seem to get much traction there. 17 goals this year with CSK Moscow. And now Kolash moves in and shoots. That's stopped by Vasilevsky. He led the playoffs to Gregorenko with 13 goals and 21 points in 20 games. CSK won the Gagarin Cup, the KHL championship. The biggest problem for Gregorenko, like a lot of European players that come to try in North America. Oh, look at this. Lead pass for Reckman. In alone, shoot, scores! Michael Ruppick ties the game! Forty-one seconds after the Russians took the lead, Michael Repic ties it up. A, a ghastly change by Russia leaves the middle of the ice wide open. Look how much room there is through the middle of the ice. There's not a Russian player in sight. Here they come off the bench. Gavrikov can't get close enough. This is a gorgeous pass by Skladnichka. The slap pass from the Montreal Canadiens prospect finds Michael Repic, his fourth of the tournament. A 1-0 lead quickly erased, and it's 1-1. Repic spent three years with the Vancouver Giants in the Western Hockey League, won a Memorial Cup with him. Loves to shoot the puck. He's out in front of the pack, and he makes no mistake. No mistake. Began the year here in Bratislava, and then moved on to Vityaz Podolsk in the KHL. This arena is home to Bratislava of the KHL. Well, 1-1 one, one tie. Here's Kaprizov tries to pull that free. Ronick off for Voracek. He turned it over. Kaprizov drops it off, and Ronick steals it back. In comes Voracek. Slides it ahead. Simone in, shoots, and Vasilevsky got just a piece of that. Now Simone back for Ronick. Chopped down neatly by Gudis. And Radko Gudis moves in. He shoots, Vasilevsky swats that away. Both Russian, Russian defensemen changed. The puck was down at the other circle, and they both went off the ice too slow. That left a wide open lane up the middle. Man, that was wide open. You don't get that very often. And Sklenichka was sharp enough to recognize it. Now picked up by Gusev, a hard shot, and Rubets makes a save on that. And Isimov leaves it there for Kucherov to Gusev. Nikita Gusev. Back for Gavrikov, a long shot. Rubets makes the save. The rebound skipped away from Kucherov. Back comes Palat the other way for the checks. Andre Palat winds back in, drops it back. And a long shot by Splanichka goes just wide. Yaskin on it. Tied up there by Sergachev. Jumping up is Ruta. And Ruta finished the year with the Tampa Bay Lightning in the NHL. That's put free by Gavrikov and Sergachev for Gusev. And Kucherov drops it back. The Russians have three Tampa players, three Washington Capitals as well. Among their 12 NHL players on the roster. Malkin winds in, drops it back. Grigorenko said it was off a leg and Kovac comes back. Two on two with Verana. Verana stays on side, walks in, shoots. That's blocked by Zadorov. Rebound at the side of the goal. Kicked away, and that now plays it up for Grigorenko. On the partial break, Grigorenko in, shoots. He fired that wide. Dad knob down to Grigorenko. And Miguel Grigorenko flips it back in front. Malkin fires. That was blocked by Gulas. Great pace here in the first period. Why the start of this game is so important. If you get blown out early, you never get your legs. Now you're in it. You're playing to win. It's the first five, seven minutes that are really difficult. Great move by Kovalchuk. Rapper on try, hit the goal post. And now Orlov drops it back. Orlov gets the puck back. Repic 
Knocks that down and feeds it back to center ice. Zaitsev being shadowed there by Phoenix Zahorna. And now Orlov swinging back, and Zahorna's back on him as well. Zahorna works it free. Steps away from Orlov. Sends it back in front. Tipped on goal by Simone. Saved by Vasilevsky. Rebound and forward check. Flipped it wide. Now the lead pass to Kuznetsa. He's alone down there, tied up by Kolaj. And Gudis has it back for the checks. Simone. Dominic Simone of the Pittsburgh Penguins moves around Kaprizov. Drop back. In comes Konichiro with a shot. That goes just wide. At the point, Ruta. That's wide as well. Spanishka steps up and tries to find Simone. That's picked off by Orlov. Now Gavrikov back with it. For Sergachev. Picked off. Yaskin into the goal post. And they're going to call that offside at the Russian line. 2.08 to go here in the first period. A game tied at one. Won the score here in the first period. Shots are nine to seven in favor of Russia. Later today, Canada against Finland for the gold medal. Gusev works in. Gusev peels back, drops it back to Hafizula. Across the Zadorov along wrist shot that goes wide. Faxa can't knock it out, but now he, he blocks that shoot in by Zadorov, and Faxa plays it back in deep for Yaskin. He sends Hafizulin flying. Now Faxa banks it back to Radko Gudis. Has time. Shoots. That deflected and dribbles down to Vasilevsky who makes the stop. I love watching Vasilevsky play goal. He's got such quick legs. Here he has to react as the puck has changed direction. The right leg's important because he's able to control the rebound. He makes an earlier left pad stop on Brana. And then after Kovash turned the puck over, Gregorenko's got a running head start at this semi breakaway, and he just misses the net on the far side. Kovash wins the draw back to Kolash. And now Gudis with a shot that's kicked up by Vasilevsky. Centering pass deflected away. Now another chance. Score! Kubali! On the pass from Kovash, and the Czechs have taken the lead. Two goals in five minutes. A 1-0 Russia lead is gone as Kubalik gets his fifth of the tournament, sixth of the tournament, rather. He has good position in front of the net, but he's going to dive back a couple of feet. Watch him back up. That puts him right into the soft spot. Nobody from Russia can get to him. And the pass comes from behind the net from Kovash. It's on the tape, and in and out, Kubalik, who is Traded by L.A. to Chicago this past year, a seventh round king pick, makes it 2-1, Czech Republic. Mentioned Kubelik, led the Swiss National League in scoring this year. So the Czechs have grabbed the lead, here they come again. Simone had it knocked away by Sergeyev. Paniska, out for Simone. Now Andronov plays it back for Sergeyev. 
One to go here in the opening period. Spanishka knocks that down, plays it around for Voracek. Sergachev throws it back in the corner. Now Andronov. Plays it down for Plotnikov. And there's Andronov with it. Tied up by Spanishka. And Frolik flips that down to the Russian zone as Sergachev goes back. That's icing with 24 seconds left in the period. Gulas, Kovash with the assist. Gulash goes behind the net to Kovash. Watch him head up. Now Kubalik is backed up a foot or so, and this hits the left arm of Vasilevsky almost right about the numbers height. And that goes into the top corner. And Kubalik has erased, helped erase the one nothing lead. Played a couple of years in Kitchener in the Ontario League. You mentioned was a seventh round pick by LA. And a chance we'll see him in Chicago this fall. Uh, traded in January to the Blackhawks and some chatter that he will sign after the tournament and give North America a go. He's got good size, Kubelik does at 6-2 and gets around the ice pretty well. Now Russia in a place they likely never thought they would be behind in the bronze medal game. If you would said days ago they might come out of this championship with nothing, it would have been inconceivable. It would not be the first time that Russia is face planted in a tournament when they've had the best team or the most talent. But it's not just the most talent, as we know, it's the team. What can you do? Russia scores off the rush most frequently. They don't cycle the puck and win battles as much as they should. Maybe it's because there's so much skill. Everybody thinks someone else is going to win the battle. But now they got to find a way to, to fight back here against the pesky Czechs. Kuznetsov tries to poke that back, but Simone took that away. Orlov steps up in the final seconds, plays it down behind the goal. Hronik lost the battle to Kapuzov. His centering pass knocked down by Frolik. And Michael Frolik moves it down to the Russian zone, and the Czechs will go to the dressing room with a 2-1 lead after 20 minutes in the bronze medal game here in Bratislava. Our first intermission is coming up.
Shots 11 9 checks after one period of play. They've got a 2 1 lead on Russia. In the bronze medal game, the Czechs trying to win their first medal at the World Championships since 2012. Michael Repik had the first Czech goal. And Ilya Kovalchuk, one of 10 players on this Russian team from the 2018 Olympics, find an answer here in the last two periods and at least come home with a medal for this World Championship where the Russians began the tournament with an 8-0 record. There were, though, raised some signs before the loss of the Finns that maybe the wheels were a bit wobbly. The Swedes came back on them in the third period down big. Now, that was, the game was out of reach. But then the Americans came back, made it a one-goal game. Well, defensively, they, they just bullied their way through the early part of the tournament. They never had to defend. They had to puck the whole time. Just seven goals against in those first seven games. You mentioned the comeback by the Swedes. They gave up four to the Swedes. So in the first six games, they gave up three goals. You're never defending. You've got the puck the whole time. For the Czechs, they had a really successful first seven games as well. They scored 39 goals. They get five against Germany. Then all of a sudden, they go flat against Canada. But they've, they've cycled and worked the puck deep here. That's the weakness against the Russians, or for the Russians, is to defend deep in their zone. Nusev drops it back and needs him off a shot, score! <laughs> 39 seconds into the period, Artem Anisimov has tied the game. Yesterday at the start of the second period, the Czechs gave up a goal to Darnell Nurse at 10 seconds. It became a backbreaker for them. Anisimov shot is going to deflect off a Czech defender and beat Rubic in goal. Guzev keeps control of the puck. And you see the deflection off of Radko Gudis' stick. Guzev is making a pass to himself, but it slides too far. It goes to Anisimov and hits the shaft of Gudis' stick. The second puck deflected through the legs of Simon Rubic. And early in the second period, Russia's tied the game. Artem Anisimov scored 15 goals for Chicago this year in his 10th National Hockey League season. Former New York Ranger, Columbus Blue Jacket. David Musil plays that down. Voracek centers it, Simone with it. Czechs had a quick answer for the Russian goal in the first period. We'll see what they have here. Yeah, 41 seconds in the first. They were trailing and they got the goal, the breakaway goal by Repik. But Russia's tied this up.
kind of changes the feel and the sense of the game. Kaprizov, rink wide because Netsov flips it back in front. Ovechkin stopped in tight by Rubets. Ovechkin, just two goals so far in the tournament. Jaskin plays Adirond. He scored against Italy and Sweden. Jaskin. The centering pass knocked down by Zaitsev. Back at the point, Yamruta drive that deflected, and Vasilevsky knocked that away. Not that we play favorites, but you've been a Vasilevsky fan from basically the first time you saw him at the World Junior. I just love the way he moves around the goal, at the size he is, the confidence that he projects to his team. Never gives up on a puck. And he looked to me from the first time I saw him like a number one goalie. Malkin pokes it free, feeds it back in front. Dadnov couldn't get a shot away. Now Dadnov down to Malkin. Evgeny Malkin to Grigorenko. There's big ice offensive hockey. You're in ice that you're never going to score from. You can control the puck there, but unless you get it inside the dots, it's really not a dangerous cycle. And on the other side of that, Ray, is they're waiting for you inside the dots. Oh, they're, they're not going to move. Why come out here and challenge? You're, you're basically in the parking lot. Gudis, Chris pass ahead. Finds a horny. Now Verona in, shoots. He whistled that wide on the other side. Now another shot deflected in front this time by Helix Zahorna. And that's stopped by Vasilevsky. Gudis. Rink wide to Thomas Zahorna who sweeps that down to the Russian zone. Here's Verana with it. Centering pass for Helix Zahorna. That's knocked away. Kept alive though. By Zamorski. Loose in the corner. Thomas Zahorna. Bumped there by Andronov. Gavrikov plays it around for Sergeyev. Blotnikov waiting for it. And Sergei Blotnikov slides it across to Gavrikov. In comes Kovalchuk. Drops it back. That's knocked down by Kubalik. Kubalik goes rink wide to Zamorski. Back down to the Russian zone. A 2-2 tie here early in the second period. Picked up by Kovac, a quick shot. Vasilevsky save, rebound. Vasilevsky reaching back. The referee's looking, and the puck stayed out. And the puck was underneath of Vasilevsky. Everybody's digging away for it. Now the scrum begins. Yesterday, he made an unbelievable stop. Vasilevsky did an acrobatic stop. Look at the splits. He's got all the way across. His left hand comes behind him to help out. But he's got it covered. Here's the Ovechkin chance earlier. Pass out wide to Kuznetsov, and this pass is perfect, but Kovalchuk's a little deep, and he can't quite get it up over top of Rubic in goal. Ovechkin playing in his 13th World Championship, a three-time gold medalist. 51 goals this year again for Ovechkin. And has now led the league in goal scoring more than any player in history. Eighth time this year, he had the most goals at the end of the season. There's no doubt he's the greatest goal scorer of his generation. The question is, is he the greatest goal scorer of all time? That's 658 goals in 1,084 games. As we get a look at the Anisimov goal off Gudis again. Man, you're, when you get into all time, it's really hard to differentiate era to era. I mean, Mike Bossy scored 50 goals nine straight years with a Bodor for a stick. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, what could he have done in with today's technology? What could Rocket Richard have done? Zaitsev shoot that pinball's around in front, and rebound put high by Kaprizov. Richard was using a straight stick for most of his career. The one what thing what Ovechkin's you... done through any from as the eras changed, as the styles changed, is has won the goal, it won the, it's been the best goal scorer eight times, as you mentioned, no matter how the game has been played, right. Picked up by Froli. Hangs that back to Splenichka. He's across to Voracek. The pass pinballed around in front. Here's Ovechkin back with it. Ovechkin, rink wide for Kaprizov. That's knocked down by Froli. He tangles there with Kuznetsov. My question becomes how close can he get to the all time goal record? 
894. Here's the mark of Wayne Gretzky. Now Zadorov with it. And how many years ago was it people wondered if he was on the decline? He had a terrible year with 32 goals. Yeah. It was an off year. Grigorenko centers it. Goes back to Malkin. Again, Gord, look how much of the possession is outside. Until Malkin gets inside, there's no danger. Now Orl of a long shot. That went off the pad of Rubets. And Malkin back on it. Zadorov to Malkin. Drops for Zadorov, works it and shoots. That drop down in front, Rubets down. And the rebound cleared down the ice by Borachek. End of a long shift for the Czechs and have to stay on. And they got a couple of them doubled over. Three of them plus the goalie right in the goal crease. Hunched over trying to grab some air. You, you stress defensively, you get exhausted. And I think the one guy we forget about the most is the goalie. He's in his crouch for most of that time frame and his, your legs start to burn. Now you get a little breather and the puck's down again. Flipped up by Simon. But the bench is too far away for the checks to change. Simone does get off. Plotnikov swept that in deep. And Andronov on it. Andronov drops it back. Kobo took a shot. But he's going to block that and set it wide. Sergachev a drive. That goes wide as well. And Plotnikov couldn't knock it down. Sergachev swings it across to Kucherov. Nikita Kucherov works in, bangs that down to Gusev. The pass too far for him. And Isimov back around for Kucherov. To Zaitsev. Yaskin. That pass deflected away by Kucherov. And now fired down the ice again, this time by Faxa. And the face off right back down to the check zone. As you get more weary, you start losing the ability to make a pass. You just want the puck out. And so the checks aren't even breaking the puck out anymore. It's slapping down the ice, relieve pressure. Hopefully you can get a change, but you don't slow momentum like that. Russia has it right now. Shots now 16-11 in favor of the Czechs. Zaitsev tries to find a lane, feeds across to Gusev, in shoots at the goal post. Zaitsev back across to Orla. Now the puck squirts away, but Gusev holds it. And that long floating shot went high and wide. A lot. Bounces off Yaska to Faxa. Radek Faxa works in and spins that around. Orlov, back for Zaitsev, Fox has stepped into him. Anisimov, in for Orlov, Dmitry Orlov works in, nifty move, and Gunas reached back and knocked that away. Rink wide pass to Kubalik. He's got a step on Zadorov, and Zadorov moved in and knocked that away. Wow, did he close nicely. Zadorov got a stick out, a giant man, and he was able to poke the puck away from Kubalik. Now picked up by Verana. In comes Verana. Zadorov sealed off the lane to him. Now Kubalik back with it. For Kovash, centering pass. Verana, hard shot. That goes wide. Now Verana back with it. Down for Kubalik. He ties up Hafizulik, but Hafizulik finds Kuznetsov. And Gudis straightened up Kaprizov. Kovac, great pass ahead. Finds he next to Horna. Around half his a Horna. Drops that back. Kovac slaps it across. Here's Philip Rolick. Sends it back across. The pass is blocked by Zadorov. And now the Russians turn to ice the puck. Sometimes you're in the right position. Don't overthink it. Zadorov just parked himself on the dot and intercepted the pass. Here's Gusev. Watch him take the puck from the outside. Two strides in on his right. That changes the angle, and he snaps this up over the left shoulder of Rubic off the crossbar. Sni nifty play by Gusev. He was outside a scoring zone, 
one or two strides and he changed it into a positive area. Ronick fades it back. Oh. Rubiger shot pad saved by Vasilevsky. What a save. <laughs> now he fixes the net while the play is going on. Anything else? Now the net is dislodged as the rush is tucked up. 2-2 two, two the score in the second period of the bronze medal game. Takes off back in the Russian zone. They've got the next, the net fixed. Let the pros do it instead of Vasilevsky in play. Vasilevsky had fixed about half of it. The Russians were breaking out of the zone. I'm surprised they blew the, the whistle then. They didn't allow them to continue the, their initial rush up the ice. Simone pokes that back for Philip Ronick. Second round pick of Detroit in 2016. Up ahead to Voracek, around Kovalchuk. Voracek moves in, they say Simone is offside. And play is called. Maybe a missed opportunity for the Czechs. They almost score to take the lead. Michael Repik, who has a goal in the game, is gonna post up high into the slot. Off the face-off win, really nice pass from Heinek Zahorna. His shot by Repik is perfect, but Vasilevsky acrobatic again the right pad out and then dives to poke the puck away that became an important shift Gord. the russians had really dominated the previous five or six minutes and at least the czechs were able to get a scoring chance get a break and now you can try and regroup again spranichka stepped up on dadnov to knock that away now verana tried to chip it gets it back and finds palat andre palat's pass Knocked away, Sergachev drops it back to Gavrikov. Vladislav Gavrikov lost the puck and a quick chance there for Ruta. And Jan Ruta comes in, he's turned away by Vasilevsky. Ruta scored two goals in 37 games this year. Can't imagine he had too many chances better than this. Russia's in full control of the puck. Gavrikov has pushed off the puck and Ruta comes right down the gut. And he ends up hitting Vasilevsky right in the middle of the chest. Kovash wins the face off back to Kolash. That deflects and Vasilevsky gets the right pad down and again that post has become dislodged. It's the same post. The referee's just giving a signal here. He wants the ice guy to come out with his drill and drill down a little deeper. Kolash's shot is going to get tipped twice, once there and once here, off of two skates. And Vasilevsky has to go back to the post. You see it pop out. Here's the drill guy making sure they carve down a little deeper into the ice. Is that a technical term, the drill guy? Drill guy, yes. It's uh, you go you go to several different courses to to pass this. I bet you didn't know that. Uh, no idea. I learn stuff from you every day. There you go. Now the drill guy, he's not the same as the water bottle guy in the bench. No, the or box. the glass guy. The glass well, that, guy here had a rickety ladder. Kolash a long shot, that deflected and Vasilevsky knocked it away. The glass guy also brought a socket wrench out to repair the glass, which I never quite understood. And Asimov drops it off to Gusev. He peels back, sends that rink wide for Kucherov. Nikita Kucherov tied up by Kolash. Out the other side for Gusev. 
Zadorov flips it wide. Zaitsev jumps up. Jan Kovash plays around for Kolosh. And now Kubalik for Gudis. Rink wide pass to Kovash in stride. Jan Kovash in, shoots. Zaitsev blocked that. Kucherov has it back. His clearing attempt knocked down. Gulash works it. He dropped it back, picked off by Anisimov. He's got Gusev with him. In comes Gusev. Backhands that wide of the goal. And Ronick back on it. The Russians are changing Ronick. A long lead pass. Just missed. He next to Horna. Now Zahorna drops it back. That shot taken by Repik was blocked. Repik trying to reach back for it. Pulled that free, but now Zagorov has it back for the Russians. One power play in the first 31 minutes of the game. Knocked down by Repik. A centering pass. Finds Musil. In shoots, and Vasilevsky makes the stop on defenseman David Musil. 8.44 to go in the second period. the shots in favor of the Czechs. 2-2 two, two the score here in the second period. What's been a pretty good bronze medal game, Ray? It has been. I've been impressed with the Czechs as they were on the ropes a little bit for four or five minutes of this period. They've re rebounded and taken control again. For years, though, you got to look at the shots with the Russians with a grain of assault. Lots of times they pass up shots and they wait, 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 wait. And they end up with five goals on 21 shots, but they're in a dogfight now. And Dranov gets there first for the Russians, gets pushed in by Faxa. And Dranov tries to pull that freight, moves it back to Sergachev. Spun around by Palat. Sergachev a long shot, and that's gloved by Simon Rubens. Kel Sergachev had a goal and a couple assists in the 4 3 win against the United States. And Probably the Russians' most mobile defenseman, uh, their best puck mover in any case. Long been a, an issue. I'm not real sure why, with all the skill the Russians have, is their D don't really move the puck very well up to their forwards. They don't, they don't seem skilled at that first pass, that clean breakout. And it seems odd, given the way their forwards are. Face-off control by the Russians. Gavrikov sends it down to Ovechkin. For Kuznetsov, led the NHL playoffs in points a year ago in Washington, captured the Stanley Cup. 32 points in the playoffs. What an outstanding run. Kaprizov chops at that, but he's got slipped into him. And up back goes Gavrikov. At the line is Ruta. That long shot deflected wide by Simone. Dominic Simone back at the points. Please good shot. That's punched away by Vasilevsky. Verana back with it. Jakub Verana. Pivots away from Sergachev. Now Ruta, another long shot kicked away by Vasilevsky. Frolik. Back for Ruta. Frolik. Swings it down to Simone. Dominic Simone. Sharp angle shot. Vasilevsky save. Rebound. Loose it front. Smitsha couldn't knock it down. And now moved ahead by Ovechkin. He was off stride. And Rubets. Rings out around for Simone. Chops it back down to the Russian zone. Gulash plays it around. Kolash plays it back in. And there's Zaitsev with it.
Gulak knocks down that clearing pass, finds Kubalik walking in. Kubalik shoots. It rolls off his stick. Malkin drops it back to Dadnov. Dadnov winds in, finds Grigorenko, shoots. He looks at that wide. Zaitsev with it. Down to Grigorenko. Grigorenko shoots, and Rubens snaps out the glove and takes that away from Dadanov. Grigorenko scored the first goal of the game as Russia got out to a 1 0 lead. His fourth of the tournament. 41 seconds later, the Czech scored Michael Repik and then Dominic Kubelik, and the early goal by Anisimov brings us to the 2-2 score, and nobody's been able to crack through since. Anisimov's been pretty good on draws here in this tournament, which is something of a surprise because he's really struggled at it in the NHL. As that puck bounces to the Czech bench. Trying to figure out where the draw should be. The, the Russians are saying this should be a penalty as this was airmailed from the check end. They're and saying the puck wound up in the crowd. Now what, the middle glass is the same height as the glass around the edge by the benches. That puck ended up in the check bench. The argument will go on deaf ears and the draw will come all the way back down to the check zone. Yusimov wins that draw back. Afi Zulin to Gusev. Across to the Zorov. He powdered that high and wide. Ripping. Lead pass to Horna, and he makes a Horna just miss there. Had Vasilevsky going the other way. Picked up by Zadorov. That's knocked down by Repic. He spins and shoots. And Vasilevsky swatted that away. Back at center ice. Zamorski for Thomas Zahorna. Now Ruta. Long lead pass finds Faxi. He fires that down to the Russian zone. Vasilevsky leads it there for Happy Zulu. Zulin's pass almost bounced right to Faxa in front. And Dronov. Borzadorov brings that around. Plotnikov waiting for it. Sergei Plotnikov winds back in the corner. From a sharp angle, shoots. Rubets makes the save. Rebound still loose. And now Plotnikov gets wrestled to the ice as Yaskin jumped on him. 5-17 to go here in the second period. Still tied at two. Five seventeen to go here in the second period. Russians grab the lead in this game on a goal by Mikhail Grigorenko, but back came the Czechs less than a minute later. Michael Repik, and they took a two-one lead. The Russians equalized here in this period. Orlov, a long shot, and that struck Kuznetsov, and he's slow to get to his feet. That's the last thing he needed in the last game of the year. As Vasilevsky oh. kicks that away. You want to get out of here healthy. Zaitsev brings that around. 
Gusev waiting for him. Kaprizov rather waiting for it. Kuznetsov trying to whip that in front. And now Kaprizov had it knocked away. Kirill Kaprizov is a fifth round pick of Minnesota. Their GM Paul Fenton is here. Kaprizov winds in. Got a year to go in his KHL deal, so the earliest Minnesota fans would see him as the fall of 2020. Dominic Simone plays it across to Gudas. Up ahead for Furley. Michael Furley plays that back in. Gudas lost his stick, and now Zaitsev has the puck back. Up ahead for Dadanov. We'll see with Grigorenko. And waiting for it is Malkin. Malkin drops it back to Gavrikov. He shut the foot's back in front, tapped wide by Malkin. Malkin back for Dadnov, takes the return pass. Malkin drops it back. Sergeyev shoots. And Rubets makes the save up high, takes the rebound away from Malkin. Kuznetsov wins the draw. He's going to try to go to the front of the net, and the shot catches him on the inside of the left leg, fells him. The slapper from his Washington teammate, Orlov. Four or five of these today were Vasilevsky's had to pick it up late. The deflection off of Jacob Voracek has turned aside. We're going to see if that had gone in because the IHF has changed the rule on pucks going in off skates. You can't direct the puck in with your skate in any manner. Well, I don't know if it's we've just been lucky, but there hasn't been yeah. very many of that, very much of that at all. We haven't seen late hit penalties very much. That was a much talked about change. Just a couple of them, I think, in the in the preliminary round. The one change we have seen in evidence, aside from three on three in overtime, is that any hitting penalty, checking from behind, checking to the head, and boarding are all two plus ten now. Vasilevsky steers that away. Spanika moves up now for the checks. Verana for Thomas Sohorna. Taken away by Kucherov. Now back at the point is Ruta. Jan Ruta back down to Verana. Jakub Verana tied up by Gavrikov. And now Gusev with it. Lifts it back to center. Knocked down by Thomas Sohorna. Rink wide pass finds Repik. Michael Repik moves in on Sergeyev. Repik, a centering pass that was knocked away by Gavrikov. Now Guda shoots. Vasilevsky kicks that out. Centering pass for Repik. He shoots from a sharp angle. And Vasilevsky squats that away. Here's Thomas Sohorna. Threads out in front. Gavrikov knocks it down and finds an Isimov. Hardeman Isimov. But squeezed there by Gudas. And Thomas Sohorna back with it. Yaskin. Tying up by an Isimov. And Plotnikov's stick went flying. And Kovalchuk bumped there by Kolash. Plotnikov knocks down Palat, a little backhand shot by Andronov, knocked away by Rubets. Now Andronov gets knocked down by Gudis. There's been only one penalty in the game, it came early in the first period to the Czechs. Bouncing puck, Rubets knocks that away. Kaprizov has it poked away by Yaskin, and he lost the puck. And Kaprizov has it back, in, shoots! That was blocked by Kolaj. And Yaskin this time knocks it down and out. Gudis is either hurt a little bit or totally gassed. He's doubled over inside the Czech blue line, now just inching into the play. And now he gets the puck. Plays around for Palat. Knocked out by Simone. The bench must look like it's 10 miles away to Gudis. He can't even get up to the blue line here. He's turning around again. Ovechkin works it and shoots. Rubens makes the stop. He can't corral the rebound. Now Palat picks up the spinning puck. Slides out of for Yaskin. And Gudis is just now getting off for the Jacks. Ovechkin winds in. Goes behind his back. Feeds it back across because Nets off. And that pass was blocked by David Musil. Final minute now in the second period. In comes Froelich with Voracek. Simone, the trailer. Froelich shoots. Kicked away by Vasilevsky. And now Malkin back with it. Evgeny Malkin. Feeds it ahead. Dadanov's got a step. Moves in. A little backhand shot. Stopped by Rubens. 
Head back by Ovechkin. Back for Gabrikov. Shoots. Rubens save. Rebound. Gabrikov stopped in tight. And the rebound cleared away. That's Rona got to stick on that. Good work by Rubic. A couple of excellent stops on Dadanov. Malkin in for Grigorenko. Moves around the seal. In. Shoots. And Rubet squeezes out with 16 seconds left in the period. Evgeny Dadanov back to back 28 goal years in his second stint in Florida. He's going to get a chance here on the rebound. Rubic can't control it. And the puck drops down. Dadanov wants to go over the pad back the other way, but turned aside nicely as Rubic has stopped 17 of the 19 Russian shots this afternoon. Dadanov played the NHL for a while, went back to the KHL, and really a different player when he came back. Goulash tying up, trying to clear that out. Doesn't hurt he plays with Alexander Barkov either. No. Another one of those great young Finnish players that isn't in their lineup, yet they're still in the gold medal game. Some pushing and shoving breaks out at the end of this period. 2-2 Two -two is the score, heading for the third in the gold medal game.
Artem Anisimov had the only goal in the second period. The shots were 15-14 in favor of the Czech Republic in that period. 26-23 overall. Last maybe 10 or 11 minutes, the Czechs started to come on again. They got run over early after Russia scored that early goal by Anisimov to tie the game at two. There was some good pressure. Finally, the Czechs got back to it, and then late in the period, the Russians started to, to generate a little more chance. But what you've talked about before, the Czechs have shortened the game. Here you go into the third period, tied at two. The expectation would be that Russia would have been in the gold medal game. There's more pressure on them in this period than there would be on the Czechs. Repek goes back for it. Bounces up by Orlov and back down the ice. Michael Repik has one of the two Czech goals. Set up by Sklenichka on a beautiful long slot pass. Russia got caught on a sloppy change and with the early icing, Russia gets out Kucherov who's been really quiet tonight again. And Gusev. Gusev signed by Vegas at the end of the regular season. He's not appearing in a game for them. His contract will start next year. Top forward for the 2018 Olympics. Repik had that knocked down by Sergachev. Gavrikov up for Kucherov. He was tied up and slid the puck ahead to Gusev. In, shoots. That was blocked by Kunis. He couldn't find where it went. Gusev has it back for Kucherov. Now Kucherov winds across the top. Poke check there by Repik. Gusev back with it. Drops that down to Kucherov. His rink wide pass blocked by Gudis. Now Kucherov, a centering pass goes through the feet of Anisimov. Gavrikov back to Gusev. He's poke checked by Gudis. Sergachev threats it ahead to Anisimov, but Kovash closed on him. And Gudis back to pick it up. I don't think Gudis is hurt, man. I just think he's exhausted. Man, he was gassed at the end of that second period. Lead pass to Ovechkin, skips off his stick. Ronick goes back to watch him. Simone, trying to knock that free. Lead pass to Voracek, with Ronick moving in, shoots, missed high and wide. Throw leak, down to Voracek. Ronick. 
Jakub Voracek trying to drop that back. Ronick shoots, and Vasilevsky makes the save through the screen of Dominic Simone. A good shot by Ronick, who had two chances on that shift. The first on the two-on-one. As Voracek's going to get the long lead pass, his pass gets across to Ronick. He wants to flip this up to the top corner, and he misses over top of Vasilevsky and the top of the net. Ronick leads all defensemen in the tournament with 11 points. Got to figure he's a regular on the Detroit blue line next season. Shift ahead to Palat. Andre Palat moves in now with Verana. Drop back. Ruta a long shot of Vasilevsky fights that off. Verana plays it down to Faxa. Knocked away by Zaitsev. And then Dronov goes around to Plotnikov. He's the only Russian player wearing blue gloves for whatever reason. That does look a little strange. Remember we used to see teams with all the mismatched equipment, different colored gloves. In comes Sergachev. Sergachev drops that back to Malkin. Fields in front of the backhand shot. Stopped by Rubens. And so Rubens was the playoff MVP for Trinets in the Czech League this year. His coach there was Václav Verada. Lead pass. Finds he next to Horna. He drops it back. Kolash a long shot. Vasilevsky knocks that away. Pokes around for Sergachev. And now Grigorenko moves out of the Malkin. Dadnov with a head of steam. He's taken down and a penalty coming to the checks. Jan Kolash will go off the first power play in the game. It's early in the first period, and once again, the Russians will have it. And not much question about this. Kolosh gets caught standing still, and as Dadanov gets through the neutral zone, now it's a bad place for him. His stick gets right through his feet, and Russia will get their power play, which has eight goals in the, in the tournament on the ice for the second time. Seems to be a little confusion. Nobody's really making their way out here, and they're going to go with the Kucherov, Gusev, Malkin group. Again, hard to believe that Alexander Ovechkin is on the second power play for Russia. He's, he's giving a class over on the bench to the forwards here, as their their group would be the second one out. He's already up. You don't often see Ovechkin watch the first part of his team's power play. Gusev goes off the stick of Musil. That's knocked out by Ruta. He finds Frolik shorthanded. Frolik sends it back across, and Vasilevsky, a great stop there on Fakta with a shorthanded chance for the check. Great effort by Radek Faxa. Turned aside by a terrific stop by Vasilevsky. This is flat out lazy from the Russians. Look where Faxa comes from. Dadnov's got a bowling ball in his pants here. He won't get back. Kucherov won't get back. That is just lazy. Either you want to win or you don't. The puck turns over and Faxa skates by both of them. And they get saved by Vasilevsky. The, the Russians change their power play. Now Kobolchuk, Ovechkin, Kaprizov and Kuznetsov are the forwards. It's not like you're going to chop liver here for the second group. If those other guys were tired, don't put them on the ice. Dinar Hafazulin plays for St. Petersburg in the KHL. Drop back to Kuznetsov. Ten of the players in this Russian team play in the KHL. Kuznetsov got squeezed there by Spadichka. And the Czechs fire it down the ice. Afi Zulin winds in. David Musil stepped into him. The apple didn't fall far from the tree where David Musil is concerned. Oh, his dad was mean. A chip off the old granite block. Kovash winds in shorthanded. In shoots, he fired that wide. Now Kovash back with it. Goes to Ruta. 
can't have a power play be successful if your guys don't want to work. Just 10 seconds left in this one. That's a tremendous kill for the Czechs. Gusev for Dadnoff. Drops that back. The pass is broken up by Pro League. Cole Ashton back on the ice. Here's a chance now for Pro League. He's got Simone with him. Pro League flips it back across, and that was deflected on the back check by Gusev. Simone, rink wide for Ronick. Walks in, snaps that pass back for Jack. Tees it up, and Simone a great chance. Vasilevsky makes the save with his shoulder. Ronick drops it back down to Voracek. Voracek. Czech captain plays it down to Froelich. Laura Simone. We want a goal as the chant for the Czech fans. Voracek. Boris Klinichka in, shoots. That deflector just wide. Vasilevsky didn't see it. Now a centering pass by Voracek, knocked down by Zergachev. And Sklenichka, a great job there to knock down that pass as Frolik moves in. Michael Frolik plays it down to Voracek. His pass was blocked by Zaitsev. And Orlov moves that back to the line. It bounces back in. Offside. 13-31 to go in the third period. 2-2 in the bronze medal game. Czechs have survived two Russian power plays. It remains a 2-2 game. Here in the third period. Palat busts in. He falls, and play continues. Faxa with it. Takes a chop at Zaitsev, and the puck goes over the glass and out of play. All of a sudden, a little bit of a desire edge has gone towards the Czechs again. Terrific play defensively as Gusev slides to block Faxa. And that is another terrific stop by Russia's best player, Andre Vasilevsky. Dominic Shimon takes the Voracek pass. It's right on the tee and he hammers it. Vasilevsky, another excellent save. Now Palat, Andre Palat, banks that back, moved back in by Kolash. Centering pass by Fox and just bounced away from Verana. Back comes Ovechkin. Walks it and shoots. That was blocked. And now Verana pokes it ahead for Faxa. Everything for the Russians is one chance and out. The Capra's off, swings it across to Orlov. That's poke checked away, and Faxa picks it up. Radic Faxa, a terrific two-way center for the Dallas Stars. Just getting better, too. Coming to his own, I'd say, in the last 18 months, become not just a, a checking guy, but he can provide offense as well. Now 15 picked up, goals. Picked up at center ice by Gusev, swings it back in front of needs some off, can't get a shot away, still loose. And Kucherov was poke checked there by Rubens. Now the Czechs clear it down, this will be icing with 12 22 to go in the third period. With all the skill that Russia has, if they win a few of these puck battles and keep the play alive, eventually you think they're going to crack through. But too much of it has been down the ice. One chance, one shot. Checks out shooting Russians, the Russians 30 to 24 at this point. One and done. It just, it, just, it just doesn't work. It, it, it's great if you get enough three on twos, but when you get one a period or two a period, you just don't get enough opportunities that way. Swanishka. 
Played for Laval this year in the American Hockey League. Was signed as a free agent by Montreal last year. Had a decent year in the American League. Played 68 games there. Ronick shoots a tip wide by Kubalik. He looks skyward. Great chance there for Kubalik. And now Sergeyev up for Kucherov. That pass missed. Ruta goes back, and now the Russians are called for icing. The league scored late in the second period. Almost gets another one here as he gets wide open in the slot. Excellent shot from Ro Ronick up top, off the outside of the goalpost, up over top of Vasilevsky. Face off, not done fairly by Anisimov. And again, if you're new to the IHF, the other subtle rule change, they don't toss the center out anymore. You get a warning, a second warning, it's a minor penalty. It's the same thing, however, it makes the game go quicker. Guys right. can't kill more time while they pretend they don't know who's supposed to take the next face off. Well, it started by trying to stop that tactic after an icing, where you deliberately get thrown out to buy yourself 10 more seconds of time. Then they changed the way you can't get tossed out after an icing. And Simone backhands that wide. For leak back in deep for Simone. Across to Voracek. Voracek feeds that back to Musil. Ronak with it now. Loose at the side of the goal, shoots off the outside of the goal. Ronak back with it. Centers it, that's knocked down by Hafazulin. And now Froelich back with it. Plays it up for Roddick, the defenseman, jumping up. Feeds it back across to Froelich as the checks are changing. And now Grigorenko with it. Approaching the midway point of the third period in a 2-2 game, Palat knocks it down. Hafizulin. Banks it back to center. Picked up by Radko Gudis. His long shot knocked away easily by Vasilevsky. Now that oh. shot deflected from Vaxa right in front, and Vasilevsky makes a great stop. You never get to take a nap in goal. This thing is going about 25 feet wide. It's just thrown to the front of the net. Vaxa just zings this towards the net, and it bounces off the the foot of one of the Russians and Andronov is trying to stop it turns into a difficult glove save a sharp glove save for Vasilevsky you wonder after the goaltender says I got enough problems out here with you trying to kick pucks by me <laughs> just don't help out here's Repic with it heels back in the corner around for Gudis flips that back in front that missed everyone now Repic back with it, long wrist shot, that goes wide. Good pressure down by the checks. Thomas Sohorna for Gudis. Tip towards the goal by Repic. The Czechs defense is becoming more and more involved in these cycles. Phoenix Sohorna taken down. Now Sohorna banks that back to Gudis. Has a look and shoots, that deflected wide, and Vasilevsky pounces on the loose puck. And Vasilevsky got a late poke there from Thomas Sohorna, didn't like that. Again, in a grindy 2-2 game, the, oh, there's Jaromir Yager. He'll get a big cheer here. Played this year in his hometown of Gladno, where he's part owner of the team. Also moonlighting for the Chinese Hockey Federation. He was here lobbying on their behalf to the IHF Council this week to make sure they got included as the host team in the Olympic Hockey Tournament in 2022. They are, despite being ranked 33rd in the world. Kubalik works it and shoots, knocked away by Vasilevsky. If NHL players go to those Olympics, there's going to be some scores. Kuznetsov was riding Gulash like a horse, then gives him a cross check. Crowd whistling their disapproval of that. And now picked up by Kaprizov. Lobs that down to Ovechkin. He and Ruta are tied up. Oh, Vetchkin went in really awkwardly. And it's just now getting to his feet. Oh, he's hurt. Well, you rarely see Ovechkin shake it up. He's just...
inching his way back to the bench. Kovacs tied up by Sergachev. Picked up by Borachek. And now Borachek tries to center it. That was blocked by Sergachev. Gusev has it back. Now picked up by Borachek. His stick was looking by Gusev. Crowd hollering for a penalty there. Kucherov has that pass picked off by Simone. In comes Simone, shoots, and Vasilevsky knocks that away with the blocker. Kucherov fights off Simone. Moves in with Gusev, fans of that shot. Gunas has it back, plays it back to center, and Orlov swings back for the Russians. Orlov flips out to an open wing and bounced by Gusev. And now Faxa pounds it back down for the checks. Eight to go in the third period, a game tied at two. Palat was swung around, and there's a penalty to the Russians. A tripping call with 7.58 to go in the period, and the checks will go to the power play for the first time. Two of the score, the checks are on the power play for the first time of the game. They're six for 33 in the tournament. Michael Frolik leads the way with two power play goals for the checks. He's out there now. Keep an eye on 43 Kovash of the players we're not as familiar with from North America. He's a veteran player, he's got great hands, and he'll get set up and get the puck in his hands. Of course, most everything will come through Voracek. Kovacs came over to North America this year, signed with the Islanders. It didn't work out there. Went to Providence in the American League, the Bruins farm club for a while, and finally came back to Europe. Rink wide pass to Frolik, drops it off to Voracek, winds his way in. Voracek in, shoots, that dribbles wide. Here's Kovacs with it. Plays it back around for Simone, Dominic Simone. He got spun around by Zaitsev. Orlov chips it ahead. To Plotnikov, who fires it down the ice. That's a terrific play by Zaitsev. He stayed in the battle. He won the puck, and Russia able to clear it down the ice. Lead pass to Voracek. Drop back to Froelich. Veronik. Cross he goes to Kovacs. Kovacs, centering pass, bounce around in front. Vasilevsky down on the puck is loose. Oh, what a stop by Vasilevsky and Kovacs. Veronik to Froelich. Maybe a game saver right there for Vasilevsky. Now Froelich. With Kovacs parked right in front. Ronak back to Froelich. Tees it up and shoots. Vasilevsky the same. And Anisimov sends it down the ice. The latest in a number of great stops for Vasilevsky. Turns aside a deflected puck. And then the rebound on Kovacs. Ronak fires that down the Russians. On a race for it. Palat gets there first. Andre Palat. Rolling puck knocked away by Orlov. Palat gets it back. Now Gulash in for it. Gulash feeds it back to Kubalik. Cross he goes. Ruta, a hard shot. That was blocked by Plotnikov. Back at the point again is Ruta. Kubalik tees it up and fires. That goes high and wide. Ten seconds to go on the Czech power play. Lots of looks. And now Kolash back to Kubalik. Kubalik feeds it down to Palat. On comes Grigorenko. Gulash, a centering pass, chipped right on. As Kolash got a stick on that, 
And Vasilevsky makes another save for the Russians with 5.51 to go in the third. Five fifty-one to go in the third period. Alex Ovechkin shaking up earlier remains on the Russian bench. They've been attending to him for the last few minutes. Repic plays it back for Veronik. Long shot hit a leg in front. Rebound. Repic couldn't find the puck at his feet. And now Gusev with it for the Russians. Brought in now by Anisimov. Flips it back across. Gusev works in, steps around Musil, his centering pass is broken up. Gusev shoots, save made by Ronick, it's in tight, the puck's still loose. And Ronick backhands it out for the checks. Rubic had to battle away as Kucherov was on the back door, slapping away at that rebound. And now Gudis banks that off the glass and down the ice. Afizul in back, icing called. And we'll get the Malkin line now for the Russians. Nikita Kucherov's got six goals in the tournament. Watch him coming in late. He's on the back door. He'll get to the net. And he's got two trances at it. Both of them turned away by Rubic. And this is that power play chance. There's the deflected save by Vasilevsky. And then again, he's so flexible and so quick reactivity, he gets across to get the left pad out to make the stop. Off the face off, Sergachev. Feeds it down to Dadanov. He's tied up there by Musil. The Kuznetsov, Kuznetsov line is up next as Krikorenko moves it and shoots. And Rubets makes the stop. We'll see if Ovechkin comes out with them. You know, Rubets has done a nice job. The third goalie for the Czech Republic, who wasn't even dressed yesterday in the semifinal game. Done a nice job giving up two goals on the 27 shots that he's faced. Made a couple of really strong saves. Plays for Trinets in the Czech Republic, which will co host the World Junior Championship this Christmas along with Ostrava. Gudas out for Yashkin. Chips that down to the Russian zone. Gavrikov plays around. Knocked down by Kovash. He's got some room. Kovacs centers it. That goes wide. Ovechkin just stood up on the bench for the first time since he went back there. Looks like he'll jump back into the game. Sergachev bumped hard by Yaskin. And now Malkin brings it back, and Gudis stepped up on him. But Gudis has had a strong day for the Czech Republic on defense. Played big minutes. Back at the point. Here is Zaitsev, a long race shot that's kicked away by Simone and played out by Kubalik. And Ovechkin steps back on for the Russians. Way down in the offensive zone, that pass got away from Kaprizov. Ruta up for Voracek. He finds Simone. Dominic Simone in, shoots. He missed just high and wide. Now Simone back on it. Tied up there by Hafizulin. Kuznetsov winds back through center ice as both teams change. Three and a half to go in the third period. Kaprizov moves in. Should overtime be required? Ten minutes, three on three. And then, if required, a shootout. 
Now, if it gets to overtime in the final game, in the gold medal game, you play all night until somebody scores them. 20 minute periods, no shootout. Verana works that free, drops it back, backs it with a chance. And Vasilevsky knocked that away. Back at the point. Kronik tees it up, and a pad save by Vasilevsky. Here's Faxa with the rebound. Works it back in front. Kronik plays it across. Musil trying to poke that ahead. Knocked down by Kucherov. He's got Gusev with him. Gusev in. Backhand shot by Kucherov. Goes wide. And now back come the checks the other way. Palat with it. Kronik jumping in. Andre Palat. Checks are changing. Palat winds in and fires. And Vasilevsky knocked that away. And now Zahorna with it. Thomas Zahorna shoots from a sharp angle. That goes wide. The line held by Gudas. Zahorna to Repic. Fires. It's off the stick of Anisimov. Up and out of play. Well, we're now getting into overtime now. It seems like one more goal will be it. Kucherov's been around the puck the last couple of shifts. Gusev, deke attempt, gets the Kucherov. And his backhand is going to be turned away. as he ends up pulling it wide of the net. Oh, Kuznetsov thought it was in. Now Kubalik with a chance, that's deflected wide. Plotnikov chops at it, knocked down by Kolash. And here is Zaitsev. Russians feed it down, icing call, the face off right back down in their zone. And this is their fourth line on the ice. Well, they like Andronov as a defensive guy for them and probably okay with him taking the draw, but the Czechs have their best line. Boracek and Frolik around Dominic Shimon, who's had several good opportunities here in the third period. Czechs out shooting the Russians 15 to five in this period. 41 check shots. Off the draw, controlled by Simone. Spanichka plays it back in the corner. Zaitsev picks it up. Two minutes to go here in the period. Plotnikov chips it out. Oren Dronov with Kovalchuk. Ilya Kovalchuk picks it up in the corner. Plays it around for Andronov, the captain of CSK Moscow, which won the Gagarin Cup this year in the KHL. And now Splinitska back with it. Jack's getting fresh legs on the ice. The Verana line comes on. And here is Jan Ruta. Up ahead to Verana. Gavrikov lost the puck. Pull out on it quickly. Chopped down now by Faxa. He's got Palat with him. Faxa in, shoots. Vasilevsky makes the save. And Palat pokes at the rebound. Gets buried there by Sergachev. Sergachev jumps on the back of his Tampa Bay teammate. A bit of an odd play at center ice. It's like a train wreck. There's bodies flying all over the place. The puck bounces, and it's a clean two-on-one. But it's well played defensively by Sergachev. He prevents Faxa from going across on the two-on-one, good stick position, good body position. He allows Vasilevsky to square up to the Dallas Stars forward Faxa. The save is made and no rebound there again. Face off, one back to Ronick. Long shot, deflected, rebound. Oh, what a chance, and Vasilevsky kicked that away. Kovash couldn't dig it out of his feet or he had the whole net. Kovash back with it, being tied up by Andronov. Inside a minute to go now in the third period. Checks, furious pressure. Yaskin back to Ronick, fan of that shot, and now Kovalchuk has it back. Ilya Kovalchuk winds across the line. His shot goes off the foot of Musil. Russians are changing, Kubalik has it now. Kubalik works in, plays that back in the corner. Orlov, a hard bump to make that play. Now back at center ice, here's Gudis with it. Across to Kolaj. Radko Gudis banks that wide of the Russian goal. And Zaitsev has it back. Gina Zaitsev plays out ahead, knocked down by Kolaj. Now Voracek moves in on it. Bumps into Orlov as time winds down here in the period. Knocked down by Frolik. Michael Frolik swings it down to Voracek. 
Shields off Orlov. Here's Voracek. Backhands it loose in front that bounced away from Simone. And time expires. The Russians and Czechs are going to overtime with the bronze medal on the line. Andre Vasilevsky faces 18 Czech shots in the third period, turns the ball away, and on we go to OT. The old rivals, the Russians and Czechs, are going to overtime. Neither team has played in overtime so far in the tournament. So for those who play in European leagues, the three-on-three -three overtime may not be as familiar in that format. NHL players, of course, are familiar with it. Well, the Czechs three, Voracek, Ronick, and Kovash are having a little meeting inside the blue line. The Russians are going with that and off. Malkin and Zaitsev. 10 minutes of three on three, and then if necessary, a shootout. 18 to five, the shots in the third period. The Czechs not able to break Vasilevsky. Ronick, lead pass for Voracek. Verana spinning it. And Voracek got tied up there with Malkin. Vrana jumped on for Kovash. Centering pass, Ronick, all alone in front. He's got Vasilevsky down, tried to bank it, and Vasilevsky gets the left pad down and stopped that. And Ronick having a word with the Russian goaltender. So the Czechs made this switch where Vrana jumped onto the ice after the opening faceoff when Kovash won the draw. He makes the play to Ronick, who has all kinds of time, but nowhere to go. And Vasilevsky makes the stop. So Kovash out now with Frolink and Ruta. It's Andronov, along with Kuznetsov and Orlov. I think the same thing going on here. If Andronov can win the draw, he'll change. I would Here's suspect he's going to dodge off the ice pretty quick here. Try to make the move, but stays in the play. Orlov pokes it around to Andronov. 
Lead pass to Orlov. In with Kuznetsov. Orlov in shoots and Rubets makes the save. Orlov poking that got buried there by Ruta. But Simon Rubex has the puck and hangs on. After winning the draw, Dronov makes a really nice play. He's trying to get off the ice, but they don't get out clean. So he's on the end boards, and he makes this nice play up the ice to Orlov. Ovechkin jumps on late, but it's Orlov's shot turned away by Rubic. And Orlov, Orlov dives. He sees the puck loose for a moment, and he takes a dive at it, but no goal. Kuznetsov tied up and moves it back in. Loose puck, Kuznetsov swats at it, now break the other way. In comes Kubalik. Drops it back for the trailer, Ronick, and Kubalik had that pass knocked away by Orlov. Kubalik down to Faxa. Radic Faxa, crisscrossing with Kubalik. Works around Kuznetsov. And again, winds in. Kubalik falls, throws that towards the goal. A little backhand shot by Faxa. And that was blocked by Kuznetsov. And getting Kuznetsov out with Ovechkin. He's directing traffic. Ovechkin drops it back to Kuznetsov. And he comes and shoots. That goes wide. Like a lumber yard down there. Two broken sticks. Two on one. Here comes Simone with Ronick. Ronick works in, holds, waits, and shoots. And Vasilevsky got a piece of that. Kucherov drops it back to Gavrikov. Breathtaking pace here so far. The checks are changing. In comes Gusev. Nikita Gusev. Crisscrossing with Kucherov. Gusev. Winds it back for Gavrikov. Gavrikov swings it down to Gusev. And Gusev goes back to center ice, being harassed there by Ruta. Kucherov holds as the Russians complete a change. Kaprizov jumps on along with Grigorenko. Kaprizov for Grigorenko. Ahead to Hafizulin. In our Hafizulin winds in. That loose puck in front. Kaprizov couldn't find it. Knocked down by Kovac. And Kovac slides it across to Gudis. Up ahead to Voracek. Grigorenko back defending. And now Voracek slides it across to Kovac. Kaprizov defending. Kovac plays it around for Voracek. Back to Voracek, spins back in the corner. Drops it down to Gudis. Gudis is tied up, slides it back to Kovac. Down to Voracek on the doorstep. Poke check there by Grigorenko. And now Kaprizov back with it. Both these lines are exhausted. And back to pick it up is Faxa. On comes Froelich along with Ronick. Russians make a late change as Faxa winds in. Radek Faxa moves in on Zaitsev. And now Malkin back with it. Up ahead for Dadanov. Rink line to Evgeny Malkin. Malkin crisscrosses with Zaitsev. Here's Zaitsev with it. Works down, walks in and shoots. That flips high and wide. And now Faxa back on it. And those broken sticks still out there. Dadanov trying to center it for Malkin. Malkin plays it back to Zaitsev. In comes Nikita Zaitsev. Zaitsev loose with it. Tied up by Hronik. Picked up by Malkin. Evgeny Malkin drops it back. And now Faxa banks it back out. Dadanov tried to milk it into icing, but the officials weren't buying. Four minutes gone here in the overtime period. Away comes Ovechkin, winds it across the line. Ovechkin feeds it across. Kuznetsov walks in. He's poke checked there by Ruta. Orlov back with it. Plays it down to Kuznetsov. Swings it across to Orlov with a rolling puck. Orlov being shadowed there by Kubalik. Puck still rolling. And Orlov tied up by Kubalik in the corner. Simone plays it around for Ruta. The Czechs get fresh legs on the ice. Palat jumps on along with Kovac. Gusev up there along with Kucherov for Russia. 
Ruta slides that pass in for Kovac. That missed. That's icing. That's a bad mistake to make. It's just a physical error, a missed pass. Philip Ronick has had a couple of chances in overtime. This one deflected and it goes under the glove of Vasilevsky wide. He had that early chance on the first shift. Comes close to ending it there. So the missed pass by Ruta, who's been on the ice for a long time. He's going to get a break here as they're cleaning up all of the broken sticks. They're all over the defensive zone. So he should be able to get a little bit of a breather here. Kovac will make the face off against Gusev, who stays out with Kucherov. Wins the draw. Back to Ruta. Yeah, Ruta for Andre Palat. He'll spin back and buy some time for the change. And now Palat moves in across the line with Kovac. Kovac in, shoots, and Vasilevsky knocks that away. Pass the midway point of the overtime period. Gusev back with it. Gusev in across the line. Being watched by Gudis down to Gavrikov. Back for Gusev. Centers for Kucherov. Works in. He's blocked there by Voracek. And now Gudis back for it. Radko Gudis. Up ahead for Voracek. Moving in with Frolik. Voracek drops it back. And Gudis. Swings it across to Frolik. Gudis wants off the ice. They keep giving him the puck, though. He can't get turned around. Ronak comes on now with Voracek and Kubalik. Ronak back to Voracek. Feeds it across. That's blocked by Kaprizov. Now Grigorenko with it. Rink wide he goes for Hafi Zulin. Racing back is Ronak. Knocks that away, but it's picked up by Kaprizov with Grigorenko. Kaprizov in, holds, shoots. And that's blocked by Ronick. Oh, he's had a fantastic overtime, Ronick has. And here he comes the other way on Hafizulin. Shoots, that's clubbed by Vasilevsky. He's up to play at the Kaprizov. Faxa knocks it free. Lays it back around to Ronick. Ronick just throws that back to the check zone. He needs off. Rubat's up ahead for Kovac. Up ahead for Simone. Dominic Simone lines in. Looks for the trailer. Kovacs that's broken up by Zaitsev. Dadnov streaking in, but Zaitsev was blocked there by Simone. And Kovacs picks up the loose puck. Lines in. Kovacs trying to feed it there to Ruta. And now Malkin back with it the other way. Kovacs back defending. Malkin walks in around Kovacs. And Malkin ran out of the room. Feeds it back, Orlov with it, and a crease violation called against Dadnov. will bring the face off outside with 2.31 to go in the overtime. While nobody scored, you started to see the guys tiring out a bit. It's getting a little more sloppy. There's going to be a turnover, and somebody will get a chance in the next two and a half minutes. There's the crease violation. But there's going to be a misplay somewhere. The ice is getting heavy. The players are getting tired, and there's lots of plays like this that have been close. What a layout from Moronic to deny Kirill Kaprizov a dangerous chance. Face off outside the check line, won by Froli. Gudis goes back because Netsov got clipped there. And now Gudis up for Palat. Andre Palat spins away from Kuznetsov who gives him a bit of the stick. Palat flips that rink wide for Froelich. Froelich for Palat in front. That's knocked away by Orlov. Ovechkin slammed into Palat. Ovechkin has Kuznetsov ahead but couldn't find him with the pass. Two to go in overtime. Kuznetsov. Throws that back to Hafi Zulin. Being shallow there by Verana. Hafi Zulin to Gusev. Gusev. Winds through center ice. Feeds across for Kucherov. Nikita Kucherov moves his way in. Will backhand pass oh! across. And Gusev missed an open net. It was wide open. He missed it by about five feet. What a play by Kucherov. 
Now Gusev with it. Moves in and shoots. And Rubets makes the stop and hangs on. Gusev just looked up to the sky. He can't believe he missed this. Watch the skill of Kucherov. Two break, two moves. It's so wide open, I can't believe Gusev missed it. He missed it by five feet. I'm with you. I can't believe it. Ruta back for Kovash. Rubic was stuck in the ground. He couldn't get anywhere over there, and the puck went back across the net into the far corner. Minutes ago in overtime. And here is Malkin. Leaves it back for Gavrikov. Dadnov with it now for the Russians. Dadnov works his way and got flattened there by Kovash. And Kovash takes the pass, chance for a two on one. Kovash with Kubelik, the pass across, and Kubelik missed that. And now Vasilevsky's knocked the net off. He'll fix that as the Russians move up the ice. Malkin lines in, drops it back. Kucherov in, shoots. He just missed wide. Oh. 20 seconds to go in OT. Hronik up ahead for Palat. Flips it back to Froelich. He shoots. That goes wide. And Palat pokes at it. Now a chance for the Russians. Kucherov had Gusev with him. That's poked away. Final seconds. Palat walks in. Andre Palat knocked out the puck. Froelich sends it back across. Vasilevsky makes the save on Ronick. And time expires in overtime. A frenetic extra period. Both teams with great chances. It remains tied at two. Five seconds left, and Palat gets knocked off the puck. aronic has got the game away on his stick. But look at Vasilevsky again. Strong, athletic push to get across. Aronic shot, misses the net. It hits the side of the, the cage. Aronic is gassed. Huge minutes for him today, and we go to a shootout. We'll have it for you with the bronze medal on the line here in Bratislava. A coin toss between the Russians and the Czechs. Kovalchuk and Voracek will supervise this. Do you want to shoot first or second? You always want to shoot first. I would. I'd prefer to shoot first. Yeah. Statistically, you're better off shooting first in the shootout. So Voracek's asking for instructions from the bench. You're better off in the shootout if you score more goals. This I don't really care if you go first or second. I think Russia has an advantage here, and it's not because of the skill. It's because of 
Vasilevsky. 50 shots he faced. He made 48 stops. Down at the other end, Simon Rubic, the third Czech goaltender, was terrific today. 28 stops on the 30 he faced. And it's a five shot shootout. They'll rotate shooters. If it goes past five, you can use the same shooters again, but they'll reverse order. Do you like that? What, reverse order? No, being used guys over again. No. It's a team. The top five guys don't score. Well, what's the rest of the guys doing? I, li I like them all to shoot. Last medal round game to go to a shootout was last year's gold medal game between the Swedes and the Swiss. Sweden won that one. The last bronze medal game to go to a shootout was in 2013. The United States beat Finland in that one. So the reason you have to have a shootout here is there's a second game to be played. You can't have endless overtime. And there's been much discussion about shootouts as a method to decide games. The IHF tweaked the overtime rules this year to go to three on three. We mentioned in the gold medal game there won't be a shootout. You'll play 20 minute overtime periods until there's a winner. So the ice has been scraped. The officials are having a little meeting at center ice too as they're making sure they're all in the right positions to ensure that both goals are covered. And it'll be Jacob Verana to shoot first for the Czechs. Four goals for Washington this year, a breakout year for him. Round one of the five round shootout. Verana in on Vasilevsky, shoots, he fired it wide. Both benches with their arms around each other. The Russians will open with Ilya Kovalchuk. Verana wants to go to the glove, Vasilevsky had it covered off nicely. Kovalchuk loves to shoot the puck, he's got a toe curve, he loves to go high. And he comes, Kovalchuk holds a backhand shot, scores! Wow, what a move. Kovalchuk goes to the backhand, straight up top, and it's 1-0 Russia. So on comes Dominic Kubali. Score to give the Czechs a 2-1 lead late in the first period. Kubali on Vasilevsky, shoots, and Vasilevsky makes a stop. Out of the gate, the Russians go with Kovalchuk, and now 128 points of Nikita Kucherov. In comes Kucherov trying to make it a 2-0 lead. Kucherov holds, shoots, and Rubets makes the stop. Still 1-0 Russia. Jan Kovash, the slick centerman, will go for the checks. In on Vasilevsky, Jan Kovash walks in, shoots, and Vasilevsky makes the stop. Kovac sold this deke so well. If he would have held it, he's got more room. He tries to grow through Ko Vasilevsky's legs. Look, if he goes around him, he might have a better chance. Vasilevsky shuts it off quickly. And now Gusev, who missed that chance in overtime, comes in the shootout. Gusev in, scores! Now the Czechs have to score to stay alive. And it'll be Philip Peronic, the defenseman. Peronic works in, nope. and Vasilevsky ran him out of room, and the Russians have won it. Russia wins the shootout and takes the bronze medal at the 2019 World Hockey Championship. Bouncing back from a devastating loss. 
in the semifinals to Finland. The Russians will not go home empty handed. The Czechs will be forward. They can thank their goaltender, Andre Vasilevsky. A brilliant performance. Four for four in the shootout. 48 stops in regulation and overtime. And Russia will go home with the bronze medal. The shots in the third period and overtime were 24 to seven in favor of the Czechs. Alex Ovechkin, a three-time gold medalist, will come over the bronze here. A uh, tough one for the Czechs. They played their hearts out. They carried much of the later part of the game, as you mentioned, Gord. Just couldn't find a way to solve the brilliance of Andre Vasilevsky. By the way, the Swedes will be fourth, or fifth, rather. Germany sixth. France and Austria relegated this year's World Championship as Kazakhstan and Belarus come up next year. One of the stories of this World Championship was the remarkable escape by Great Britain and Italy, who won their last games to stay alive and avoid relegation. Gusev missed that chance in overtime, but scores in the shootout to give the Russians the win. We'll get the player of the game presentations for each country, and then the bronze medal presentation to the Russians. One note about that shootout, Voracek never got a chance. You backload your guys, sometimes your best guy doesn't get out there. The Gusev goal pretty much was critical, of course, it meant that the Czechs had the score. Voronik turned aside and Voracek doesn't get out there. Olympic gold medalist, world champion, Stanley Cup champion. The best player of the Czech Republic, number 26, Mikhail Chepi. Michael Repik is the player of the game for the Czechs. Scored to give the Czechs a 2-1 lead in the first period. Jogger spent several years in the KHL. Played in Olds. Now we'll get the presentation of the Medals to the officials who worked this game. Olivier Graham from Canada, Mika Kokakori from Finland, the referees, Andreas Malmquist from Sweden, and Brian Oliver from the U.S. were the linesmen. Ernie Fazell will step down as the IHF president in September of 2020. Second to last world championship. The last will be in his home country of Switzerland in Zurich and Lausanne next spring. Zell was an official himself at one time. And of course, you can't work a game that your country is playing, so Kakakori can't do the gold medal game. This is as far as he could have gone.
now time to present the bronze medals and a cheer will go up for the Russian fans as the president of the Russian Ice Hockey Federation steps forward, Vladislav Tretyak, the one and only. So the Russians will be third after finishing sixth a year ago. They'd won medals in four previous world championships. But this team could not have pictured this days ago. The team rolled through the tournament winning its first eight games. Ilya Komachuk, the captain, steps forward. And Ovechkin follows. Look at the names of this Russian team. 212 NHL goals in the past season. MVPs, Stanley Cup champions, Olympic gold medalists. But a 1 0 loss to Finland in the semifinals. Derailed their gold medal hopes. Ovechkin took that nasty tumble to the end boards in the third period. Gets a bronze. And he's some off because that's off. It just it didn't feel like they would be playing today. However, they they couldn't get anything going against the Finns, and quite frankly, they were lucky to be in the overtime as the the Czechs had 18 shots in the third period, several dangerous ones, and just couldn't find the game-winning goal. Ilya Vorobyov, the second-year head coach of the Russian national team, took over right before the World Championship a year ago under unusual circumstances. Oleg Znarok left suddenly. One of the scoring leaders of the tournament. And definitely one of the scoring leaders of Team Russia. Great season behind him. So the Russians are third. All that's left to be decided now. The top two spots between Canada and Finland in the gold medal game tonight. Russia last won gold in 2014. Presentation of the third place trophy to the Russians. That's you, Kobe. Beautiful medals. So this is the moment. Please welcome the captain of Team Russia, Ilya Kovachu. Gonzalez, we know that picture, a native of St. Catharines, Ontario, who's the head of the Spanish Ice Federation. Not just hockey, figure skating, curling, all their ice sports. Gonzalez is the head of their federation. And now we'll have the playing of the Russian national anthem.
The fact that Canada and Finland would be in the gold medal game might have come as news to them late in their quarterfinal matchups, Ray. They have pulled. They have pulled. The fact that Canada and Finland would be in the gold medal game, Ray, might have come as news to them late in their quarterfinal matchups. They both look like they're heading for certain defeat. Both of them score with the goaltender out of the net to, to send the game to overtime. Both of them win in extra time. I would say it's even more unlikely of the two teams that the Finns made it all the way through. A team that has left a, a majority of the top end of their, of their country's abilities outside. Uh, abilities? Yeah. I don't like that. Abilities. Opportunities. Oh, why do you got to count it, KP? Why you like that? Okay. <laughs> the fact that Canada and Finland would be in this gold medal game might have come as news to them late in their quarterfinal matchups, Ray. They both look like they were heading for certain defeat. Right down to the wire for both of them. Of course, Canada couldn't have been much later. The Mark Stone goal that sent them into to extra time and actually that was uh that was uh, severson oh okay. hang on here hang on okay thank you okay. if you had told the canadians and Finns they'd be playing in the gold medal game late in their quarterfinal matchups they might have been a bit surprised they were both heading for defeat both of them on the ropes late in their quarterfinal matchups. Damon Severson scores with .4 seconds to set up Mark Stone's overtime winner. And Marco Antela, the Finnish captain, has his first point of the tournament late with the goalie pulled for the Finns. They go on to win an extra time too. I think it's a bigger surprise that the Finns made it their way through. A lineup that doesn't have Mikko Ranton and Sebastian Ajo, uh, Alexander Barkov, for example. But the Canadian roster went through multiples of players that weren't able or didn't want to come. So when John Tavares was injured prior to the tournament, it seemed like Canada had this great hole. How were they going to be able to fill in around Tavares' loss? Well, they got better as the tournament went along. They started to grind out some wins. Terrific performances from Anthony Mantha and Mark Stone, yet they almost didn't make it. And here they are, both of them, 60 minutes from a gold medal. And 16 days after the Finns beat Canada 3-1 in the opening game of this 2019 World Championship. Oh, thank you. It fell further in your favor? Uh, kind of, but both teams got really good chances. They got really good chance, like with five seconds left. and. Uh, uh, Vice saved it back. I don't know how. So uh, you know he he really played for us, and uh, he's our number one star for sure. What does it mean to the team to have the support in the crowd like that? It's great. You know the World Championship. It's always big for a country, and a lot of people came here to support. A lot of people watching on TV. So we really appreciate that, and uh, we play for them for sure. Congratulations. Go celebrate. Thank you. heavily outshot them in this one. Well, they had so many chances again, especially in the overtime. It's probably the worst loss I, uh, I've been part of a long time. Looking back on this tournament, what will you remember most about this team that you fought so hard with? <coughs> well, I think we played good hockey. You know, we uh, <coughs> we scored a lot of goals. And uh, I think we deserve the medal, but you know, in the end, it doesn't matter. Congrats to Russia, you know, it's a hell of a team. We just came up a little short. What did it mean to have support like this in the rank cheering for you guys all month long? Well, you know, I was lucky enough to be part of this uh, twice. So, uh, you know, it's amazing and uh, I'll remember this for the rest of my life. Thank you very much. 